Have you ever wondered how many rubber bands it takes to implode a watermelon? Well, I'm not sure how many people ever have, but I thought science could solve that for us. So we've got the big experiment. Now, this is a science experiment. So I'm gonna introduce you to all of the sciencey parts of the experiment and how to get prepared to actually do the experiment. Because there's a few things you've gotta do before you do it. This is science after all. Now, the very first thing you need to do is realize that as a science experiment, there are gonna be a lot of variables, things that could change. Now, because schools all over the place are gonna be doing this experiment, we wanna try and keep them the same as we can. The one variable that we can't really control that's gonna be different for everyone who does it is this thing here. Oh, the watermelon. So this is what's known as the independent variable. That's the thing that will change for every school because it'll be slightly different. Your watermelon will be slightly different to someone else's watermelon. That's okay. But it means we've got to try and keep everything else the same. Now, every science experiment, you measure something. In this case, you're going to be measuring the number of rubber bands it takes. So, what are some things we've got to keep the same? Well, there's quite a lot of them. You can pause it now and have a chat amongst yourselves if you like, or you can let me name a few of them. Well, one thing that we need to keep the same is the size of rubber band. Size number 64 rubber band is what everyone is going to be using. Where we put the rubber bands around the watermelon needs to be the same for everybody. The measurements that you take of the watermelon need to be the same. We need to keep everything as much the same as we can. So, when it comes to do the experiment, there's a few things you'll need to keep in mind. The first is we need to keep the watermelon relatively still and steady. So I'm gonna put it the stalk side up in, well, this is actually just a dog bowl. What have you used down here? Just make sure it's not breakable. You could use a, a bean bag or some sand, something like that is fine. Having it up high makes it a little bit easier for people to come over and get the rubber bands around it. Okay, that's nice and steady, stops it rolling away, which is great. The rubber bands, to keep count of the rubber bands, I find it easiest to have them in lots of 10. And it's much easier if people put them on in pairs. Safety equipment, you'll definitely need some safety equipment when you come to start doing the experiment. Some glasses, just in case rubber bands break, you don't want them flying in your eye. And obviously, later on, watermelon will be flying everywhere. You don't want that in your eyes. And some old clothes or some smocks or some lab coats if you've got them to protect you. Now, of course, if you don't have lab glasses, regular glasses are fine sunglasses are fine, just something to protect the eyes. If you happen to have, ah, there it is, a tape measure, you can start the science part, which is taking the measurements. So there's a couple of measurements you've got to take before you start. The first is around the waist of the watermelon. Okay, 71. And you've also got to measure that way around the watermelon. So I'll turn it sideways for that. And mine is, 85 and a half. So obviously my watermelon is a little bit longer than it is round. 71 and 85 and a half. So we need those two measurements and you also need to know the weight of the watermelon. And if you want to do some tricky maths and calculate volumes and densities, you certainly can do that from there. So those are the measurements. Make sure you take the measurements. Before you start, you've got to make some predictions. And I think everybody doing the experiment should make a prediction. How many rubber bands do you think it will take? And you can make your predictions once you've seen maybe how many rubber bands this one will take you. So you've got a bit of an idea of what yours might take. So once you've made your predictions, you've taken your measurements, you've got all of the safety in place so that only a couple of people at a time are actually getting around the watermelon because there's gonna be a lot of force on this watermelon. As you'll see, it does go pretty rapidly when it goes. So you only want a couple of people in the sort of the watermelony zone and no one leaning over the top of the watermelon. Once you've done all that, you're probably ready to get going.